How you doing, YouTube? Matt with Massive Beer Reviews, back with yet another review. IPA time. Um, not just any IPA time, Stone and Joy By. Um, if you are living under a rock and don't drink beer or not a big IPA person, you might not know about it, but Stone's been putting out a line for a couple years now, I think two years, um, maybe a little bit longer than two years now, of uh, their Enjoy By series, which is basically, it's a really good concept in that I know IPA is supposed to be drank as fast as humanly possible for when it leaves the brewery and uh, they basically make these bottles, they stamp them and uh, basically it forces the distributors and the retailers to uh, kind of get it out there, push it and get it uh, get it into the hands as quickly as possible. So that's kind of cool. Um, I've never had one before because I'm not a huge, I, I shouldn't say I'm not a huge IPA guy. I do really like my IPAs, double IPAs, triple IPAs, whatever you want to call hot forward beers. I do enjoy them, but there's so many bad ones. It's so hard to weed through the minutia of um, the IPA craziness that I tend to steer clear unless there's a uh, something is presented to me as a really good uh, IPA and someone really recommends one. Um, I've heard some good things about this. This just hit my shelves uh, the other day. Where I live in northeastern Pennsylvania, this is uh, beginning of December. So I figured, you know, hey, pick it up. Might, might as well give it a whirl, give it a review. Um, as far as what it says on the bottle, it says devastatingly fresh um, stone enjoyed by 12 26 2014. That's the date on this one. IPA, 9.4% alcohol, uh, brewed and bottled by Stone Brewing Company. Um, let's see, government warning stuff. Um, this is, like I said, Enjoy by 1226. I can't really make the date out on the top here. It looks like 1117. So you're talking about, give or take about two weeks old. Um, let's see. And on the back, got a little bit of a story. Live for the now, uh, live for the present. Uh, you have in your hands a devastatingly fresh double IPA. Freshness is a key component of many beers, especially big, hoppy IPAs. But well, we've taken it further, a lot further, with this one. We brewed this IPA specifically not to last. We've gone to extensive lengths to ensure you get this in your hands, or get your hands on this beer within an extraordinarily short window. And we sent a very clear message in the name of the beer itself that there is no time than right now to enjoy this IPA. Stone Brewing Company, blah, 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 blah. This beer is no better than the time, uh, this, there is no better time than right now to enjoy this beer. So there you go. Oh, well, label, it's kind of cool. Um, you know, Stone stuff doesn't really blow me away. Uh, the Chocoveza one was kind of cool, and a couple of the labels are alright, but uh, I'm always a fan of screen printing, so it's nice. So yeah, let's see what she has to offer. Hmm. Oh, you double IPAs. So varying in style. So many of them. It's very hard to weed through. Um, that is a really creamy top for double IPA. Uh, almost two fingers ahead. Super clear body. What do you expect from double IPA? A little bit of carbonation, but not much else going on. Uber golden. Golden, golden, golden goodness. You know? Exactly what you'd expect. Let's see what she has on her nose. It, a blast of both equally piney and citrusy hop. I mean, you know, it's your grapefruit. Almost a little bit sweeter, like citrusy hop, like kiwi. Yeah, grapefruit, kiwi. It smells really nice. And that pininess to it, that kind of grassy pininess, but it's it, it, this particular iteration, and I know they can vary from batch to batch, this particular one does seem like it's a little bit more on the citrusy side than the piney side. A little bit of grassiness, pineiness, but that's that grapefruit kiwiness to it. Really fruity, really citrusy, but doesn't like what's the word I'm looking for? It's balanced really, really well. Even though that that citrus is uh, is what's forward for me. Can't back, get back past that sweetness on that uh, on that hop. It's super, super nice. Really, just absolute, absolutely beautiful to smell. Really, really, really nice beer in the nose. Absolutely fantastic. If there's anything like it is on the nose, it is in the mouth, I'm going to be a huge fan. I can tell you that much right now. 
Yeah, really nice. Yeah, dive right in. Cheers. Mm. Earthy. Boom, right off the bat. Wow, didn't expect that. It's kind of cool. It's got this crazy earthiness to it, which I haven't really come across with a ton of it. Yeah, it's weird. It's it's unique in its own way, um, double IPA wise. Um, like I said, it's not it's super citrusy on the nose with that pininess that's there. That's not like super in your face. In the mouth, probably a bit more balanced. Kind of earthiness. And like that, like syrupy, resiny dankness to it. It's actually kind of cool. Um, not my favorite double IPA, but it's a unique take on a style. Man, now that grapefruit and citrus is coming through. It's nice. It's nice for what it is. And you absolutely taste that freshness there. It's it, it's it, it's there in spades. Um, really nice IPA. Um, like I said, I'm not. I don't. I don't fawn or f dive or run to the style. It's something that's typically I really pick and choose my IPAs, double IPAs, triple IPAs, stuff like that. Um, and uh, you know, picked it up on a whim, and I'm kind of glad I did. Um, not the best one I've ever had, but it's really nice and really unique. It's cool. I rarely get that kind of earthiness from my IPs. They're usually just like either a ton of hops or like a nice balance between, uh, you know, hoppiness and maltiness to where it's sweet and that kind of, I don't want to say better, but bitterness of the hop and then you got that sweetness of the malt and you kind of balance. To have that kind of like over earthiness to it is kind of unique. At least for me, I mean, my limited exposure to IPAs, not that I'm not exposed to a ton of them, but I pick and choose my battles, so it's not like I'm drinking them as much as I do my maltier beers. But it's cool. Super refreshing. Super fresh. And a really nice beer. Zero booze whatsoever. You know, you're talking almost 10%. Really nice beer. Uh, Rating-wise, I'd give it like an 86 86, 87, you know, um, really nice beer, um, I've had better double IPAs, I've had worse, um, so yeah, 87, let's give it, uh, overall, um, really nice beer, I mean, you can't really knock it for anything as far as style-wise, I just wish there was a little bit more to it, in the mouth, I wish it did have the slightest, a bit more, um, malt sweetness to it, to kind of counterbalance the hoppiness, um, that's in there, but can't have everything. Or no, we can actually. That's why we rate stuff. The high end, high rated stuff has everything. Anyway, so yeah, I give it a um, 87 overall. Availability and value. I mean, that's kind of where it shines. Typically, in this area, northeastern Pennsylvania, we can get enjoyed by a multitude of places. I'm going to give it availability of a 10. And value, I think it was eight dollars and fifty cents for a bomber. Um, of a beer of this quality, it's quite nice. Especially if you're an IPA person, you know, it's probably going to be right up your alley. And the value that you're getting for a bomber at that price is huge. So I'm going to give it a value scale of an 8. I'd love to see it a little bit cheaper. You know, I can go out and get myself a Lagunitas bomber for a little bit cheaper and, and probably be up my alley a little bit more because they tend to balance their hop and malt a little bit more balanced. So it's there's that sweetness equal to hoppiness. So that would get a higher... Rating for me, um, if we're going to just go by generic breweries and whatever, I'll stop rambling on that point. But anyway, yeah, yeah I mean, availability and value is awesome. Um, really nice rating, 80, what did I say, 87? And uh, just a really nice beer. I mean, if you're a fan of double IPAs or IPAs in general and you want fresh goodness, 
um, definitely something to check out. I mean, the fact that they're actually doing this to, like, um, take a beer style that's supposed to be drank as fresh as humanly possible and kind of forcing the hand of distributors and retailers is kind of a cool concept. I kind of dig it. So just from that aspect, you should give it a whirl. Just to give it a whirl to see what it's all about and uh, see what a fresh IPA is or double IPA. I know I said to say IPA all the time, but you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, another review in the books. So uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the review. If you did or you didn't or somewhere in between, please leave a comment in the comment section below. Um, if you would like to check us out anywhere else on the internet, you can on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Massive Beers. We tend to put most stuff, most of our stuff up on uh, Instagram, so if you're going to check us out anywhere, check us out there. And that's it. Another review down. So hopefully you guys enjoyed our review. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed a really nice beer right now, and uh, hopefully you see you next time. Cheers.